Hey guys, I'm Maria. I am the marketing director for Gator Minden. You're probably familiar with my face if you watch any of our YouTube channels, um, but I am here at RDA Serpa in Montgomery, Alabama, and we're gonna be taking over Fitting Friday live from the booth. So the sculpted fit is kind of like what would happen if you put a corset on the classic fit. So the classic, like we said, is straight cut from here back. And then if you put the corset on and you cinch in the middle, that's what the sculpted fit is. The other thing to note about the sculpted fit is that because it does hug your arch more, like the satin hugs your arch more, um, often dancers find they can drop down and try a softer shank. So if you're looking for more roll through in your shoes and you're not in the sculpted fit, it could be a good thing to try. So all the different colored bags that our point shoes come in tell you what um, flexibility your shank is. So we have a different colored bag for each different shank that we make and there are five different shanks that we make. Yeah, um, but the, the point that we're trying to drive home here is that just because your hard shoes can last 60, 90, 100, 120 hours of day on, doesn't mean they should. It doesn't mean that you should wear them for that. Okay, so if the green bag feels too soft, there's a few different things you should do. The very first thing I usually recommend is to get refit from the beginning without toe pads if you're wearing them. I say this because um, I often see dancers that are wearing a hard shank because their shoe is too wide and who are wearing a shoe that's too wide because they're wearing big bulky toe pads that they started the fitting with and so they're losing support and their shank has to be really, really hard. I've personally fit a number of dancers that started out in hard shanks, um, in wide fits, that we kind of you know took out their padding, adjusted their fit and took them down to an extra flex or even a supple shank and they felt more supported than they ever did in their parts. Another option for making the shoe feel more supportive is to try a deeper vamp. So if you are in a low vamp and uh, you can take it, you can try switching to the deep vamp. If you're already in the deep vamp, you can also consider a special order for a deeper vamp. Basically, your vamp and your shank work together to help balance your support. So if your vamp is too low and your shoe feels soft, then it could be fixed just by raising the vamp as opposed to having to go to a harder shank. Um, so make sure those two things are right for you. We just got another great question um, from you guys about selecting your shank. The um, poly underscore 3 p.m. 13 says, I wear a super hard in Grishko's because my shoes break down quickly. What shank would you recommend for me? Often dancers think that if they wear a hard shank in other brands, that they should automatically wear a hard shank in Gaynor Minden, and that's not the case. So if you're wearing a hard shank because you want it to last longer, then you probably actually wouldn't want the hard shank in Gaynor Minden. The thing to remember is that Gaynor Minden point shoes and our shanks specifically in our boxes don't break down the same way that traditional shoes do. So the question you should really ask yourself is, when do your Grishkos in this example feel perfect? If you're always switching out your shoes and you really prefer a brand new unbroken in shoe, then you might like the hard shank. But if you like your shoes after one class or after two classes even, then you might prefer the extra flex or even the supple. Or on the more extreme end, if you like your shoes dead and you just spend the entire time you're wearing them waiting for them to die and be really, really soft, then we suggest trying the supple or the feather or even the pianissimo, which is a really, really soft shoe. And the best part about all of that is no matter what shank you're in, it's gonna last just as long as our hard shank will. So because the material that we use doesn't change, even the softer shanks, they last longer. They're just softer for the entire life of the shoe. Another way to think of it is kind of like the lifespan of a traditional shoe. So they start out really hard and then you break them in a little bit and then most people get to their golden point or their golden moment around that time that lasts for an hour a day and then they die. Whereas Gaynor Mindens, you want to pick them when they're new to be what feels like the golden moment of your traditional point shoe. And then they stay at the golden moment 
the whole time you have them. Okay, we just got two questions that are very similar or that have a similar answer, so we're gonna put them together. The first is, what do I do about getting bruised toenails? And the second is, what do I do about sinking in my box if the box down is too small? Okay, we just got two questions that are very similar or that have a similar answer, so we're gonna put them together. The first is, what do I do about getting bruised toenails? And the second is, what do I do about sinking in my box if the box down is too small? Okay, so first things first, bruised toenails are a result of excess pressure on the toenail. And this happens when your shoes are too short and your toes are jamming into the end all the time, or when the shoe is too wide and it's not supporting you on point and you're sinking down and putting excess pressure on your toes. And also make sure that your shoe is properly supporting you in the width. So you don't want your shoe to be too wide. If it is too wide, you will constantly sink and you'll constantly put pressure on your toenails and you will get bruised toenails. Now, if you can't get new shoes right away and you have to work with the shoes you have, we suggest adding in um, one of our fabulous box liners or instant wings. Both of those will help take up some extra space and hold your foot in place and keep it from sinking when you go on point. So for my dancer, I think it was uh, at M Dance uh, who asked about sinking in her four box but the three box being too small, then the solution would be to try adding a box liner or an instant wing to keep you from sinking. So Ballerina Lena asked, what uh, color bags do some of our pros wear? I feel like today's Fitting Friday is all about shanks and I love it because I love talking about shanks because they're really, really important to how any point shoe functions, but really to how your gainer rhythms function. Short answer is that our pros wear all, all of our shanks. Um, a lot of them do like the softer shanks because it lets them really articulate their feet um, and work their feet and it makes their feet kind of almost like hands. You know, you get this really great range of motion. But there are also absolutely professionals that like and that need our harder shanks too. Um, it can also depend on what they're dancing. So if they're dancing a really strenuous classical ballet, they might choose an extra flex or a hard versus contemporary that might need a softer shank. It's kind of like if you wear a traditional shoe and you save your brand new shoes for stage for your 32 fuetes, but you save a dead pair for your modern piece or for your contemporary variation. It's the same thing. It's a hard shank versus a feather shank for us. So we are gonna take a little break for a bit because I need to plug my phone in. Um, it has been on use all day today and I am down to about 10% battery. So I will be back in a little bit to answer more questions. And we are back. My phone is charged. Um, and we have a question from Pally Ramirez about how to know when your Gator Minden Point shoes are dead. And there are a few ways to answer that. The quick answer is whenever you start to feel like you are losing support or like you don't have the same amount of support as you had when the shoes were new, um, it's probably time to look at getting a new pair. Now with Gainer Mindens, as we know, the um, interior supportive components are the box and the shank, which is this little blue, pleat, blue piece in this particular shoe here. Um, those pieces don't change over time, so that's not gonna soften, however, our satin is a functional satin, so that's part of why the fit is so important because the satin does work to give you support. And once the satin kind of stretches out a little bit or softens, then you are gonna lose some support from the shoe then. And then also the, um, the glues and the cement that we use to kind of hold all of these pieces of the shoe together, those will also start to weaken and loosen over time. So it's not that the shoes don't change, they will change, but they don't change to the same extent that paper and paste shoes do, where you've got the you know, really, really, really hard at the beginning and then they're obviously dead because they're either falling apart or you're dancing on your knuckles. That doesn't happen with Gaynor Minden. They just get slightly less supportive and it's time for a new pair. Oh, and also, if you ever see the plastic part showing through the tip, it's time for a new pair. Oh, and also, if you ever see the plastic part showing through the tip, it's time for a new pair. Oh, and also, if you ever see the plastic part showing through the tip, it's time for a new pair. Okay, so studio bag details. Studio bag is coming back in stock in June. It is available on dancer.com and newly available at stores all over the world. So if you want a studio bag, tell your local store so they can order you one. As far as questions about if you can pre-order the bag, we will be opening up for pre-order. Um, I'm not sure exactly when yet, but a little closer to when they're actually gonna be coming in. But we'll definitely let you guys all know uh, via email and here on Instagram.
Okay, we're gonna combine um, three more questions again because they have very similar answers, and that is what makes Gainer Mention different from other brands? Why do we use plastic? And why do some people call us cheater shoes? Okay, so the first and most obvious thing that makes Gainer Mention different from other brands is the materials that we use to construct the. So if you look here, this is what we call our shoe board that shows you other traditionally made shoes next to a Gainer Mention. So here we have two traditionally made point shoes and you can see the shanks are made from kind of a traditional red board that builds up to make it pretty thick and off the ground. And um, the boxes are made from a paper and paste kind of construction. Fun fact, on this one, you guys can kind of see, you can actually like read whatever newspaper, I don't know what that is, they used to make this box out of. So that's what's, that's what's around your toes, your toes there is a uh, newspaper and glue. Gaynor Minden, on the other hand, we use an elastomeric polymer that makes up the box and the shank. That's this white kind of plastic material here and it tapers off at the end to always give you a three-quartered shank and it's pre art I switched to a blue shank so you guys could actually see the plastic better. So that light blue piece is the elastomeric polymer. And then we also use a really high quality pour-on foam that lines the inside of the shoes to make it more comfortable. And then you may have also noticed that the shoes don't have any pleats on the bottom. So traditionally made point shoes often have pleats um, across the bottom here, and ours don't. They're nice and flat, which lets you stand really flat to the ground. So the next part of that question was, why do we use plastic in the shoes? Which is actually a really great, really great question. Um, and there are a few reasons that we will go over in just a moment. So back before we launched in 1993, 25 years ago, happy 25th anniversary to us, um, Eliza Minden, who is our head of design and designer of the Point Shoes, was really frustrated with um, was really frustrated with watching dancers be sidelined by injury um, and struggle with finding supportive point shoes and kind of using these antiquated tools to do these really amazing, amazing things that ballet is now requiring of people. And she was also frustrated um, working for a small company with small companies struggling financially to be able to afford these point shoes that were only lasting, you know, maybe a week of rehearsals, if not less. So she set out to find newer materials and modern materials that would work to kind of create a new, better point shoe that would be more supportive and more long lasting. And plastic um, and plastics as a, as a whole kind of tend to be a really good material for that because the material that we use, it is flexible, it maintains its shape, it's supportive, and it doesn't break down. And so because the plastic itself doesn't change, that is why we offer the sh shoes in five different weights, basically, um, for five different variances of stiffness or of flexibility. So we do answer this question in much more depth on our YouTube channel on the myth busting video. Um, so we're going to link that uh, here and I'm going to post a little clip for it next for, for you, but then we'll also address it right now. Uh, and that is that Gaynor Mindens are cheater shoes or that Gaynor Mindens make your feet weaker. Oh, I hate this one. I just hate it. Well, the good news is that's not true. So the basic answer is that Gaynor Mindens are not cheater shoes. Um, but what is very, very important is that you have the right shank to allow you to properly work through your foot all the time from the very beginning. So you should be able to properly and fully roll from flat to demi to three quarter all the way up to point and back down to point from the very first time you get your gainer mendens. If you can't do that, then your shoe is too hard and you are not properly working your foot. So one last quick PSA to all my gainer mendem wearers out there. If you are wearing gainer mendem point shoes, please, 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 please make sure that you are using your feet properly. Um, and that you are actually strengthening your feet and your shoes because that is 100% possible. So we had a question earlier um, about what to do if your shoes are gapping when you go to demi point and your drawstring's already pulled, as tight as it can be. 
So at some point you will gaff when you roll to dummy point no matter what just because of the way your foot changes shape. So when it's on flat, it's the widest it's going to be. And as you roll through dummy, the shoe's going to kind of not splay out to the side, but it might gap a little bit on the sides. Uh, however, it can really be exacerbated if your fit's not correct. So if your shoe is too wide, it's going to gap more when you roll through point. And if your shoe is too wide because you're wearing a thick toe pad, then it's really going to gap. So double check your fit. However, it can really be exacerbated if your fit's not correct. So if your shoe is too wide, it's going to gap more when you roll through point. And if your shoe is too wide because you're wearing a thick toe pad, then it's really gonna gap. So double check your fit. And then there was a follow-up question to those two, which is another good one, which is how do you know when a shoe is really suitable for you? Because sometimes the shoe can feel one way when you try it on, and then when you actually dance in it, it can feel really different. So sometimes it is really hard to tell if the shoe is right for you um, because even you know with a gainer minden with a traditional shoe how it feels when you spend you know five minutes standing on it in a store is going to be very different from how it functions so basically don't rush through your fittings make sure you spend the time uh, make sure your fitter is not rushing through if you have questions ask them if you're unsure about something speak up that's the only way that we're going to know if you're really comfortable the other things you can do to make sure that your fit is as close to perfect as possible is to try to go get fit for point shoes after you've already danced that day or later in the afternoon so that your feet have had some time to swell and you're not fitting a shoe, you know, first thing when you wake up in the morning. That just kind of ensures that whatever you try on in the store will at least fit the same when you get into class. We still haven't dealt with function yet, but at least you're not going to be surprised by the shoe suddenly being too big or too small. Now, as far as the function goes, with gainer mindens, definitely test out the demi point in the shoes um, when you're trying them on to make sure you can effectively, you know, work through your foot that way. With traditional point shoes, it's a little bit harder to do that because you are going to break the shoe down the more that you work through it. Um, so that's going to be a little harder to tell, but really, you kind of just know when the shoe's right. And the last thing is just to not be discouraged if you get into class and the shoe doesn't feel right or something feels off. That's totally normal. Point shoes are a process. They are a lifetime process or a career time process. Um, professional dancers will tell you that. You know, even professionals that have been dancing for years and years and years and into their career, they're still tweaking their shoes or they're still finding that they might need something different one day than the other day or they might need something different for one rep than for another rep. Um, so don't be afraid to keep tweaking and keep changing. So we had another good question, which is what's the difference between the sculpted fit and the narrow and how do I know which one I need? So the main difference, and this is an important uh, distinction, is that the sculpted fit is a model. So it's an overall shape of the shoe, whereas the narrow is a width. So you can have a narrow sculpted fit or a narrow classic fit. And how do you know what you need? Well, the sculpted or the, the model you want to select based on your overall foot shape. So if you have a very straight cut foot, then you straight cut. If you have a very straight foot, then you might want the classic fit. Um, and how do you know what you need? Well, the sculpted or the, the model you want to select based on your overall foot shape. So if you have a very straight cut foot, then you straight cut. If you have a very straight foot, then you might want the classic fit. Um, and if you have a very, you know, tapered foot where your metatarsals are much wider than your heel, or you have a like big disappearing heel, then maybe you want a sleek fit. And then for your width, you really just want to pick the narrowest width that your foot can still easily go into. So if you can easily fit into a narrow in the sculpted fit, then that's probably the right width in the sculpted fit. Uh, but if you're trying a narrow sculpted fit and it doesn't work, then maybe try the medium sculpted fit. Okay guys, I have our last question for Fitting Friday today and personally I love this one because it addresses a pet peeve of mine and I know many other fitters um, and definitely some teachers that have issue with this thing too. So keep watching. So it says, I would love to try a softer shank, but my local store tells me that my feet are too strong for dancing in a softer shank because I would fall over the box. I don't think that my feet are really that strong. They're just flexible. I also think that they aren't getting stronger when I use the heart. Then she continues on to say, um, my feet have changed a lot since I was originally fit in the green shank and I have a completely different shape now. Is it possible that the green shank is too soft for me? 
Um, so first and foremost, I just wanna say that you are totally on the right track because there is 100% a big difference between flexibility and strength. What, and what people often refer to as strength is really flexibility and weakness. Flexibility and strength kind of lie at separate ends of the spectrum and depending on where you lie on that spectrum, everybody's trying to work towards the center. So, I mean, you ask your friends that have super, super archy feet or ask professional dancers that you want here, but generally the best way to build strength is to work through your full range of motion, Absolutely. which means you are going from flat to demi to three quarter to point every mm -hmm. time you go up and down. And if you are, but basically, just because you have a super super high arch, um, does not necessarily mean that your foot is too strong for the hard shank. It might mean that you're sitting too much in the hard shank, and that you need to work on working through your foot all the way and work building that range of motion and building strength. In which case, a slightly softer uh, shank might be a good option for you. Start using it at the bar where you have some other support and you're not totally on your own in the center and just doing some releves um, and really focusing on working through your full range of motion. Also, if you're gonna try something softer, again, I feel like a broken record, but like triple check your fit. Make sure your fit is as supportive as it possibly can be before you even look at your shank strength. We always say fit first at the office, so I basically, when I'm fitting dancers, I almost ask them to ignore um, the shank strength until I get the shoe as supportive as possible. And then once the fit's right, then we talk about the shank and how that feels. And usually, and usually dancers are really surprised by the fact that they're often in a softer shank than they thought they needed when their fit is correct. And I always start without padding because that lets me get as close to the foot as possible and it lets you get as supportive of a fit as possible. And when you start without padding and you get a really close fit, not only does it often help you go to a softer shank, but you also often need less padding in the shoe, which lets you have a lot more control over the shoe um, than if you had this big bulky pad around your foot. So it's kind of a win-win situation. That's all for Fitting Friday this week, or this month, I guess. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, we'll see you the first Friday in June. Bye.